like a dishwasher. It looks like a freaking dishwasher, yeah. Hi, I'm David Falk. I'm the owner and operator of Sassafras Creek Organic Farm, and our farm is located in Southern Maryland, Leonardtown, Maryland specifically. So I met with the owner, Amon, Amon, A-M-M-E-N, and Z is his middle name and S is Shirk, his last name. So they've been making these brush washer systems for years, and so he started making this a couple years ago. Uh, John Paul from Roxbury had one, you may saw the presentation, the, the hood of it opens up mm -hmm. so you can get in there and you can get the brushes on top and I asked him about, because I, I said I'm up at this factory, you know, I might as well take a look around. It's really just nothing but a huge couple of barns kind of opened, you know, opened up and I met his son and so the one thing I did when I went up there, I said, hey man, I'm not sure this is going to work. I was particularly interested in being able to wash root crops like sweet potatoes, we grow a lot of those. And Irish potatoes. That's where, and then the carrots. I'm, I'm, I'm a learning how to grow carrots. I'm still a new farmer when it comes to that. So, but I took a bunch of stuff up there. I said, I said I'm not going to buy it unless it works. I need you need to turn it on or make it run for me. <laughs> so I brought a bunch. That's no problem. So we ran it through, and I said I think it's going to be okay. The, the cost was for this and the table was six thousand two hundred dollars. I picked that myself. That didn't include shipping. So, and that included like a 10% discount because I bought it right at the beginning of the year. Um, the thing is powered by 240 volt to run the electric motors. And by the way, this thing comes optional. You can get it because it's also in the Mennonite and Amish community. Some of them don't use electricity. So you can use hydraulics and, and air and even a, a portable like gasoline engine. So, but electricity makes sense for our stuff. So it basically has three, three stages of water coming in. And so the first stage is what they're calling, it's right here, they call it low pressure, high volume. And essentially what happens is water comes into this PVC pipe and it, uh, it dumps down in and it pre-soaks whatever you're running through there. So, and a feature on this stuff too is these things are adjustable, the height. Whoops. So, you can adjust the height. That's kind of nice too, because then you can change the height of of what what goes in there. If you want to run sanitized crates in there, you know you can change the the height of that machine. So we're still learning how to use it, but this is a line that just runs water through it and pre-soaks things. The next section is what they call a high pressure section, and you can see a high pressure line hose coming in here, and also one down here in the bottom. And I forgot to mention too that the low pressure the high volume, low pressure also has a top and a bottom uh, water coming in from the bottom. And so then the high pressure comes in through here and also down in here. I mean, looking at this side, you can see it has a, a rotating wand right here that spins around. And there's one also down the bottom of it just as well. So. This is adjustable with the pitch. You can change how fast that goes based on water pressure. And just like the other thing, you can you can change the height of this, this unit too, to lower it. With these two thumb screws. Hmm. So you can really kind of get close to your work. There's a lot of variability. Again, like I said, we're still figuring it out. So you can get a lot closer to the work. And I'll also show you, you can change the pressure of the volume, the water pressure, PSI coming out of this thing. The manufacturer says it's supposed to run between 800 and 1,000 PSI. But I've discovered that if you have enough water supply, you can actually get it up to higher than 1,000. I think the motor is rated about 1,500, the pump. And as long as you have enough water through it, you can run it, I think, almost at 1,500 PSI. I'm not sure what crop you'd want to run through there. Maybe a, you know, crates or something. That's a lot of pressure coming in the top and bottom. I think that'd be ripping the skin off your potatoes. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> they said we're not going to pre-slice your vegetables. Yeah, oh, it, it'll peel a carrot for yeah. sure. So we're and we've also we're sort of fooling around. We discovered the pressure is something you have to figure out. The the conveyor belt speed. I'll show you that. Um, and and the height. So you've got speed. You got water pressure and you have height. All those variables come into play on every different vegetable. So we're sort of developing, in my mind right now, I'm kind of keeping mental notes to develop an SOP, standard operating procedure. So then that's that piece. And then the last component of water is, is right here. And this is, this is the final rinse. You hook a hose here 
And similar to what you saw, you'll see a series of nozzles right up on the top here. And there's also a series down at the bottom. This is just like a typical sprayer, like a spray nozzle. And this is just essentially water pressure from a garden hose or whether a source is. So I don't know what the volume is, what the actual rate is, but our, we have a 28 per gallon hydrant in this packing facility. So we're putting in 28 gallons of rock approximately per minute that's coming in that nozzle. It's pretty good. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. I think the minimal demand for this unit is about eight gallons per minute. But as I said earlier, if you're gonna run eight gallons of water, there's it's water coming in here and there's water coming in that section. You need to make sure you have enough. Otherwise you can't get the water pressure dialed up. So as far as controls go, one of the features that's kind of neat about this thing is I, in theory, I haven't yet had the practice. You can run it in different configurations. You can run the high pressure only, you can run the pre-soak only, or you can run them both. And in theory, you could also just run the rinse too, which might be a sanitizing line because this is such fresh water. So the controls give you that combination of this one, this one, or both together at the same time. We're running the thing, the things we've tried so far, sweet potatoes, carrots, beets, Jerusalem artichokes. Um, we're, we're running it kind of the full system because most of the stuff, and I'll show you, I want to soak it first a little bit, get some water on it, and then I want to get the pressure on it. This is the control. It's a rheostat essentially for the conveyor speed, so you can change that. I'm finding right now with what we're running, some of the root crops, particularly carrots, that we're running it's kind of slow. But I think as we would get more experience with the piece of equipment, we're doing storage carrots, I think as we get into it, <clears throat> and we're maybe doing, considering uh, washing the carrots as they come out of the field right in advance, because I think they're less mm. prone to staining. And so at that, since there we might run a bit faster. The manufacturer also says, I haven't tried it, that you can run a bunch set of greens through here. So like bunched radishes, bunch beets, bunch turnips, bunch you know carrots, whatever, freshly from the field, they run it. And I know I talked to other farmers, a couple of them that have one of these things. They say it works like that too. So I haven't tried it, but I'm eager to try that and um, see what kind of settings we have to do that without blowing out the greens, you know, on something like that. Manufacturer also says you can run this in just a low pressure mode, this here, to kind of run bunch greens through. And I know another farmer from Massachusetts, he said, yeah, we, we run our kale through there just to kind of hydro cool it. So I think there's a lot of flexibility in what the machine will do. Um, but we just got it less than a month ago, so we're still fooling around with it. We're not running kale through it yet. So a recap, uh, the, we're, we're told the crop will run beets, carrots, sunchokes, radishes, turnip, potatoes, winter squash probably, bunch root crops, sweet potatoes is what I've run, I like that. And then also we can run apparently loose leaf things like head lettuce and celery and bunch kale, things like that. So we'll see, we haven't tried that yet, we'll see how it goes.